Welcome to Marquee Backstage All Access. I'm your host, Julie Milam. As always, we are going to dive deep into the lives and music of our guests, and we'll share five full-length song performances, all of which were recorded at Thunder Sound Studios. Now kick back, grab a drink, and get ready for the dynamic Americana sounds of Whiskey Wolves of the West. After a chance meeting at Stagecoach in 2016, Leroy Powell and Tim Jones collaborated musically and garnered immediate critical acclaim. There's been no looking back since, and we're excited to share music from their latest album, I Can't Take Me Anywhere, released in April of 2020. Get ready for a taste of their latest music. Here is Leroy and Tim with I Ain't Giving Up On You. She said you'd be right back Where'd you go? What did you do? They're all good looking Pockets full of cash Big city money can buy what I am My love for you is true You better believe To take us back to the beginning, we sit down with Tim Jones, guitarist, singer, and songwriter, as he recalls his first encounter with Leroy, champagne-filled boots, and all. We'll also learn how they started making music 
and Tim will share his most memorable experience as a member of Whiskey Wolves of the West. And fresh from their latest release, I Can't Take Me Anywhere, get ready for a performance of Savannah. Tim, take us back to the beginning. Where did Whiskey Wolves of the West emerge from? Um, Whiskey Wolves of the West emerged from, Leroy was playing a show at Stagecoach 2016 and was, had booked his own show and he asked if I wanted to play it with him. I had met Leroy years before he, when he was playing with Shooter Jennings. Um, I used to work at this place called the Hotel Cafe in Los Angeles and Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine would do a show there every Tuesday called The Night Watchman. And he would have all like superstar guests come in every every week, and, and one week was was Leroy and Shooter, and they had played. And then I guess I was supposed to be uh, Leroy's date that night was supposed to be Winona Ryder, and Leroy had bolted straight away from the the show and went to the after party. He was pre partying for the after party. <laughs> And so I was left to be with his date because I was kind of doing hospitality at the time. So I took Winona Ryder to the party for Leroy and found him already in the hot tub with a cigar <laughs> in one hand and a boot of champagne. Oh, yes. And I was like, hey, great show tonight. You know, it was really cool. And he was like, oh, thanks, kid. Why don't you give me some more champagne? <laughs> and so I was immediately impressed, you know, by, by his talent. <laughs> uh, and then we, we ran into each other, uh, you know, over the, in Chicago and uh, playing shows all, all around. And we ended up on a, on a cruise, on the Leonard Skinner and Simple Man cruise together uh, with a group I have tr called Truth and Salvage Company. And he was like direct support for Skinner. And, um, and we were on a cruise ship for like days. So we ended up hanging out a lot. And, uh, I had recounted that story to him. He didn't remember it the same way that, that I did. But <laughs> no uh, Winona Ryder this time, just yeah, you guys. Yeah, he was like Winona Ryder. I would have remembered that. Uh, we uh, and then we were in um, uh, Nashville together and started writing songs. And he uh, had this opportunity at Stagecoach. I had just you know been in a band for so long. I didn't really want to be in a band. But I also didn't like performing as, as Tim Jones. I've just never been interested as, as a solo performer. And Leroy was like, I'm really tired of myself. I would like to perform like under something else and do something different. And he's like, we'll call it Whiskey Wolves of the West. And I was like, that's, that's an awfully silly name. Are you sure we want to call it that? And he's like, well, Kat, my, my fiance, came up with it. And I was like, oh, well, if she thinks it's cool, then it's got to be cool. Perfect. She knows what's cool, and I don't. So great. And uh, and then we played the show in at Stagecoach, which is like the biggest country music festival in, in the world. And Randy Lewis from the LA Times wrote us up and said that we were great. And I was like, oh, well, we, we must be great then. So we've just been riding that, you know, belief ever, ever since. So when you're in the Whiskey Wolves of the West mindset, like what does that look like from the inside? It's really, there's, there's like two, parts about it we we certainly write songs from this characters that we kind of are and and like want to be like you know retired rock stars that still like to come down from the mountain every once in a while <laughs> and and have some fun and play some shows but then we also really write you know personal things as as well that are about you know having kids and and uh having a family and living the life that everyone else, you know, in in America and around the world lives, um, which is a nice duality to have, where it's like you're not constantly having to emote the singer songwriter being this person all the time, but you also aren't just creating some uh, 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 persona that doesn't have any grounding in in reality. So that's that's the way I I vision it. What are your most fun and memorable moments so far with Whiskey Wolf of the West? I mean, we, people have compared us to like the two old guys in the, on the Muppets thing that sit up in the balcony and just kind of like make fun of everybody else or like judge everything harshly. Uh, 
which we I spend, don't see that at all. We spend, we spend a lot of time laughing. Uh, I love the Prius touring that we do when we go and just do duo shows, the, the two of us, because it's really hard to out-complain uh, one, or definitely both of us get together. There is no out-complaining both of us. We've, we've seen it all and done it all, and we're, we're tired of it. We're here to tell the story. We're here to tell the story of how tired we are of it. Uh, which we think is funny. I don't know. So, some other people have said that we're funny. So I'll just keep going with that. Uh, we play, uh, you know, all, uh, we still go out all over the country on some weekends, and we, which now we usually do travel by plane. It's not private jet like how we have envisioned, maybe necessarily at this age, but so we, we fly together a lot. And Leroy would, for a while, because of his paranoia of many things, would not go through the scanner. And so we'd have to get a full hand check every time that we would fly, which was, which was super funny to me. A person who likes being touched the least then would offer himself <laughs> up to be touched the most at the most uncomfortable place. In front of a large audience. In front of a large audience at like, yeah, just the, the one place where you just want to like, just glide through as fast as possible is where he wanted to spend most of his time during the day. And see where that's gotten you. He had a plan all along. Yeah, see? <laughs> I remember you in the autumn leaves, the amber breeze. How could I forget your pirouettes in silhouette? Against a full moon rising in the night Hiding dark surprises in your eyes Until my head was ringing And my heart was singing Savannah where the shadows play Savannah Where my secrets stay Savannah We were out of time Savannah My darling Forever You'll be on My Such a trip. I held your hand until I lost my grip. Soon to be September. Those nights I remember Savannah, where the shadows play Savannah, where my secrets stay. Shadows play Savannah, where my secrets stay. Savannah, we were out of time. Savannah, my darling, forever you'll be on my mind. I remember you in the autumn. If you would like to watch the televised episode of Whiskey Wolves of the West, visit our YouTube channel at Marquee Backstage and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our extended music and interview content. Next, we sit down with the one and only Leroy Powell as he opens up about his family life and how he spends his time off stage. We'll follow that up with an acoustic performance you don't want to miss of Mine, Old Mine. Hey, Leroy, when you guys are not playing music, 
What keeps you grounded? What keeps you focused? Well, focus is hard to get uh, at any stage of this uh, ordeal. But uh, uh, when we don't play, when I don't play music, I spend time with my with my girls. I have three daughters. It's a four year old, two year old, and a three month old. So yeah, it's the it's the carousel of emotion. <laughs> And uh, I spend a lot of time with them. We, I do daddy. I push around the, the, uh, their trikes and uh, ride bikes, and we do crafts. <laughs> do they do makeup <laughs> on you? Hair, nails? They do. Uh, they do doctor. Oh, okay. they got their doctor kits. So uh, uh, my two-year-old, uh, she runs around and says, "I'm gonna doctor you up, daddy," and she has this. Uh, stethoscope she puts in and it has a heartbeat on it so anywhere on your body when the heartbeat noise starts to go k -k -k -k, that's she's doctoring you up she's uh, band-aids yeah uh no well yeah they got into the band-aids that yeah that only happened a couple times <laughs> <laughs> they ran out of the band-aids real fast family is important to you family i know is important to the rest of the group as well yeah yeah this whole thing uh start uh the whole thing started with us not wanting to uh, tour anymore, and we're sick of uh, doing that sort of thing. And we really, it's like we kind of wanted to make a band no one would want to listen to. <laughs> For your own enjoyment. For our own enjoyment. Because I uh, originally I thought, we're just going to do a, make a band of all slow songs and not try to chase the carrot of, you know, getting a single or anything like that that would be an up-tempo kind of music. And... Uh, and it's it's surprising when you start uh, uh, when you start playing uh, and trying to make money on you know when you're playing with your your band and doing shows that uh, people want to hear up tempo songs so <laughs> we were forced to write them just so we could uh, have our own songs to play during the shows. Um, people want to move to the music. Yeah, they want to move to. So we started making uh, making music like that, and despite ourselves, you know, the band is doing better and better and. Uh, but we still spend. I mean, I spend a majority of my time at home with the kids uh, when I when I can, and so they help me out. I got a little. I got a home studio, and they come in and screw up everything, and uh, it's great. Do they? Do you try out new songs on them? Oh, all the time. That's the, they're the best critics. So I get the I get the song placed, and they usually kind of hear the whole evolution of it because I generally. I got to mix it and I'm putting all the pieces together so they can hear it through the wall, what's happening. And then I say, all right, everybody, come on in here and listen to it. And then they, uh, they immediately start grooving to it. Uh, most of the time we hit the mark, we have a new song called, uh, I can't take me anywhere about like, you know, what you'd expect. And, uh, my two year old, that's her favorite song. She can't, you know, you can't take her anywhere. It's the, the lyrics are, uh, 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 how's it start? It goes, uh, what are the, what's the first lyric of that song, Tim? It's, uh, cause I get, uh, it's, uh, they're all, it's, yeah, no, the first song he says, uh, uh, oh, man, says, uh, oh, I've been thrown out of more bars than I've been in. I hit the bullseye when I'm aiming for the pins, but, but, but my daughter says when I'm aiming for the towns <laughs> from printer's alley to sunset and vine, I'm just looking for the rest of my mind. And she's, I can't take me anywhere. It's really funny. So is she the one that is more most likely to follow in your footsteps? No, I think they're all. Well, I mean, I can't tell about the the, the <laughs> baby yet, but they're both really artistic. They just run around and just jump. Uh, they they dance and they sing, and uh, and they they're both really artistic. I mean, I I'd rather just raise a couple accountants. To, you know, someone's <laughs> got to take care of me when I'm old. But. She, does your four-year-old go, hey, Dad, that would make a great song? Yeah, she, she, well, she started in giving a lot of compliments, which I'm, I was really impressed with. She starts to say, oh, Daddy, you're the best singer ever. And I'm like, you're right. That's the best thing. <laughs> you're so smart. <laughs> you're the smartest girl ever. You're the smartest little girl. Yeah, she's surrounded by, I mean, I, I just know, I'm just really blessed to have, you know, the music community in Nashville is pretty intense. And so she has all the people that come over to the house are singers or artists. And so she's uh, uh, used to having singers over all the time and really good ones. And 
Uh, so she just, it's anything she hears on the radio, she thinks she has access to it immediately. So the, she got on this kick of listening to Michael McDonald and uh, just for two months solid every day, Michael McDonald, Michael McDonald, and which is not a bad way to go. And she said, and one day she's like, Daddy, I think, I think we need to have Michael McDonald to come over and bring his friends, the Doobies. <laughs> and they should sing at my birthday party. Uh, so she wants to have Michael McDonald sing. It is just, you know, a simple request. Doesn't seem like that far out of the... <laughs> and as innocent as can be. Yeah. You know, hey, Dad, can you make this happen? Yeah, come on. Get Michael McDonald to come over. So, well, I don't know Michael McDonald. But, <laughs> but I can reach out. <laughs> I can... You know, it reminds me of my own childhood growing up around music where you, you take for granted that that is a really cool place to be. She's growing up with a backstage pass to some of the moments that your fans would do anything to have. Just a moment in your house to watch musicians get together and jam. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just, that's really, uh, for me, because we... Uh, all the aspects, like the writing and the recording and the, uh, the you know, doing shows and getting everything together, it's it's like a 24-7 cycle. So I'm always working or, on, you know, in the middle of doing something. So no matter what it is, they're seeing that all the time. But they don't really see it as any different. But I'm, uh, uh, and they're starting to understand that I got to work before. It's hard to, you know, explain that you got to work to a four-year-old who wants to, you know, play dollies. <laughs> and uh, so. But she sees she can, she, you can have it all. Balance. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nice. I'm really, you know, it's just, we're lucky to be in a, you know, a place in the world where you can, you know, make a couple bucks playing music where you, you can uh, stay home with your family and all of that stuff. So hopefully we can keep that going. Incredible blessing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Hundred years ago, they took silver, they took gold from the river, rose through this canyon. The treasures that I had to offer lined their coffins, filled their pockets. And they took them to the cities far away. Me, oh me, mine, oh mine. I'm just a hole in the ground. I used to be the deepest of dreams. Me, oh me, mine. Me, oh me, mine, oh 
would like to thank our friends at Thunder Sound Studios for allowing us to film our show from their fully equipped analog and digital recording studio complex in Franklin, Kentucky. For more information about Thunder Sound, please visit thundersound.com or follow them on social media at Thunder Sound Studio. Up next, Leroy and Tim describe a challenge they started last year, which has helped them keep their songwriting catalog growing. That's right, we're talking about Whiskey Wolf Wednesday and the process the duo goes through as they co-write each masterpiece. And stick around because right after that, Whiskey Wolves of the West perform Roll On By. We release a, a new song every other Wednesday. We started it last year and we're just keeping it going. I don't know. There's no pressure there. No. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work, but it, it's it's fun work because every we get to reinvent ourselves every two weeks. Yeah. We, get, we have a new new music out, and we don't have to go through the laborious uh, anticipation of a record label <laughs> waiting to put your record out yeah. and picking the, the right color font or the the, the you know. You know, working Sequencing. three months on a on a you know what the what the artwork's going to look like. Well, and Leroy is Mixing so uh, efficient and has made so many records for other people and played on so many records. And we have some of like the greatest. We have access to some of the greatest musicians in in the world. That we're able to record and produce music, you know, very efficiently. And he produces it and plays on it all and does it. So I just have the pretty easy part. All I have to do is just sing it exactly the way he wants. And then <laughs> that usually only takes six or seven days. Do what you're told. <laughs> you just do what to, you're told. Well, see, we get together, we write songs, you know. I'll show up with a song. I'll have, like, you know, I'll, get, I'll have the verses and the chord progression and the choruses <laughs> and the bridges. And then we start working together on it. And Tim... Just changes the first verse, just and then it fixes the line in the chorus. Chisel away at it until till I finally get it right. And take <laughs> then away, it's a co-write. Take, take away my pre-courses. And I leave him with the guitar solo. They don't ever change that. Just let it be. Just, just let him do what he wants until there. Until it's done. And Woo. then he says, well, what about that other guitar solo you played when we first cut it? Yeah. I'm all you son of That one was better. <laughs> it was better. Once it's done, the other one was better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, when it's in the shrink wrap. So how do you figure out, is it literally just what song you write right now is the one that's going to come out the following Wednesday release? Or do you write several and say, okay, what sequence are we going to release these to the public? I don't think it's, I think it's, uh, it's we just get to make it up as we go. Because we, we do have a, we're sitting on, right now we're sitting on, I think, 12 songs. And we think, released 24, 25 in the last, uh, like, year, last year. And, and some. Um we will record them in blocks and then kind of determine, you know, I'd like to release some if there's a full moon and we can plan around releasing around that is cool. Or if we have some shows or something, if something's going to happen. Uh, and, and we've got some artists that we've been working with um, that hopefully we'll be putting out the songs that we've written and recorded with them I don't think in we this have next a, year. We definitely don't have any, there's no method of what song goes out. It's like the one that's done. Yeah, that's whichever one, one he finishes. Yeah. 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 yeah, just that one. I finished this one. Just use this. We've become surprisingly <laughs> unprecious about about any of it, but there are also we're forthright in and intentional in the writing and the recording process. The releasing part is kind of just like let's put it out there into the world and, and see what happens because there is so much out there to see, uh, you know, for for people that. We, we just want to be a part of it and have leave as much of a legacy as we possibly can. What's the coolest response you've had so far to a song you've released? Like when you literally put it out in the universe to see what happens. Have you ever had a surprise response that was like, wow? It's so weird these days. It's, you know, it's mostly on the Internet. So, and I'm not like a, much of an Interneter. I go on there, I check my Instagram, very, you know, I see look, the first guy said, oh, look at that, I like that, and then I just do something else. <laughs> get in, get out. He I only reads his encyclopedias there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I really don't do too much, so, it, uh, I mean, I'm excited if if it starts to get attention, like we've been added to, a, you know, like a couple playlists, and so that's cool, 
I like being. That's fabulous. I like being added to things. Yeah, I like yeah. when anytime. I mean, I yeah. live for applause. All I want, <laughs> all I want, is somebody's attention yeah. and for them to like me. Yeah. And so you get two of those things from across. Like you know, Spotify will break down where all that you're getting played, and to see that we're, uh, you know, our biggest fans are like in Dallas, in Chicago, in New York, and and Houston, and. Um, Baltimore and like places that we haven't really been yet uh but that we're excited to go to and the same as like Germany like we have people that are listening to us there and and we got picked and put on all this playlist in Germany and and then these people from the Netherlands invited us to come play these shows and that's cool I mean uh it's always nice nice to be liked it's nice to look forward to something really exciting happening and rather than you know already had everything happen and Right. You're just right. sort of trying to chase, uh, you know, the the old success. You know, that's the nice thing. This is a brand new band. I mean, it's four, three and a half years old, but uh, it's yeah, a brand the, new when you're, yeah, it's when you're a thousand and years old. And people are coming for you, which is the best part of it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, with that, I I I definitely think that was part of the Whiskey Wolves of the West credo was like. We're not going to sit and wait for something to happen or have somebody else do something for us. And we're also not going to go out and try and chase, you know, play a hundred shows all across America. Like if somebody wants us somewhere, they let us know. Here we, we are. Come. Mm -hmm. Here we are. It's perfect. Like you. There you go. Thanks for, thanks for having us. <laughs> There's my applause. So proud of you. Days a while, it's cold on my skin. But I don't mind when the clouds roll on by. Here comes the rain.
know you can't get enough of Whiskey Wolves of the West, and neither can we. So stay up to date on their musical magic by following them on social media at Whiskey Wolves of the West or visit their website at whiskeywolvesofthewest.com. Please follow us as well on all social media platforms at Marquee Backstage. There you'll find our behind the scenes shenanigans, upcoming guests, and lots of new music. Next week, Rod Davis stops by Marquee Backstage All Access and pays tribute to Everyday America with his latest release. Now for one final Whiskey Wolves of the West song, get ready for End of My Rope. Until next time, I'm your host, Julie Milam, and I'll meet you here next week for more Marquee Backstage All Access. It's a long day Trying to keep the sadness away I'll keep working Till the sun is gone One more hour I have to stay I got bills I have to pay And there ain't nobody but me It's gonna get it done At the end of my road there's a little more rope When the rain is coming down There's another day behind the clouds At the end of my hope There's a little more hope And the trouble's here to stay I guess I'll find another way At the end of my rope at the end of my road is a little more road. Before the sun came up, this is what I did. Fix the car, fed the dogs, put the breakfast out for the kids. If I'm feeling down on my luck, I don't even think about giving up. They're depending on me, getting by ain't good enough. At the end of my rope, there's a little more rope. When the rain is coming down There's another day behind the cloud At the end of my hope There's a little more hope And the trouble's here to say I guess I'll find another way At the end of my rope At the end of my rope there's a little more road I'm doing things now that I never do for me I guess I'm a whole lot stronger than I ever thought I'd be At the end of my road There's a little more road and the rain is coming down There's another day behind the clouds At the end of my hope There's a little more hope And the trouble's here to stay I guess I'll find another way At the end of my rope At the end of my rope is a little more at the end of my